Episodes of Pellet Swap are suggested by viewers like you. If there's a character you'd like me to analyze, let me know in the comment section down below. Good morrow everyone, Silvershire here, and welcome back to Pellet Swap, where I rank the costumes and character designs of your favorite fighting games. And by your favorite fighting games, I mean my favorite fighting games, and by my favorite fighting games, I mean Soul Calibur. Today, we're looking at the reason I can't introduce Soul Calibur to my friends, Valdo. But before we begin our analysis, here's a quick refresher course on who Valdo is and what we should be looking for in his character designs. Valdo is the very, very, very loyal servant of a wealthy merchant named Verci, whose name is impossible to say without doing that Italian hand motion thing. Verci was a collector of rare weapons, and the one he coveted most of all was the cursed sword, Soul Edge. So he and Valdo set sail to find the legendary blade. They also hired the Dread Captain Cervantes de Leon to help look for it, thus accidentally setting into motion the plot of the entire series. But while they were away, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood happened, and Verci's home was ransacked in the ensuing chaos, leaving him with nothing but the contents of his ships. He grew paranoid that this too would be taken from him, so he commissioned a giant underground vault called the Money Pit to store his literal boatloads of remaining riches. Once it was complete, he ordered Valdo to kill anyone who knew of its location, and then seal himself within to serve as its guardian. Decades have passed since then, and Verci has died. But Valdo, now blind and sane and haunted by an apparition of Verci created by Soul Edge, continues to protect his master's hoard. Soul Edge's costumes tend to be simpler and more grounded than in later entries, but that's certainly not the case for Valdo. The first things you'll likely notice after his partial nudity are the gag and blindfold, which serve a dual purpose. As well as representing subservience to his master, which is the core of his character, they dehumanize him by removing his ability to emote. He can't speak and his expressions can't be read, which adds to his unsettling nature. His outfit is almost entirely asymmetrical and seems to have been pieced together with little rhyme or reason. It's messy and chaotic, which communicates his mental deterioration. Does make me wonder where he got all this stuff, though. Apparently thongs and fishnets were part of Verci's prized collection. The dark bluish purple and bright gold form a striking complementary color scheme. I can't say I'm a fan of Valdo's whole vibe, but the designers had a clear vision of what they wanted him to be and executed it pretty well. 5 out of 10. This costume's alternate color is bright red, bordering on magenta. I'm usually partial to red costumes, but this lacks the strong contrast of his default version. 4 out of 10. His 2P is considerably safer for work, but no less creepy. He's covered nearly head-to-toe in form-fitting armor with tons of straps and buckles, almost making it seem as if he's trapped within his suit. This costume dehumanizes him to an even greater extent. Out of context, he could easily pass for some kind of robot or alien, especially judging by his in-game model rather than his render. His face is still obscured, but the scopes and metal bars attached to his mask create the illusion of eyes and a mouth, which is even more unsettling. That said, binoculars are a weird choice since he, you know, can't see. His palette is predominantly a rusty orange that reminds me of a crab, which I guess is fitting since he fights with claws. However, there's not much variety. He does have some golden brown accents, but they're so close to orange that it all blends together. Also, I'd have preferred if they went all the way and covered up the small bits of his head and face that are still exposed. 4 out of 10. This costume's alternate color is dark green, which makes the golden brown stand out more. He looks somewhat militaristic, like he might be an enemy in Metal Gear Solid. 5 out of 10. His 3P foregoes armor entirely, opting instead for this strappy rubber thing. It takes some cues from his 1P, but symmetrical and less haphazard, and it has a distinct silhouette thanks to the long coattails. I like the decision to give him a tattoo or body paint on his abdomen, because if you're going to show that much skin, you might as well do something with it. But that's the only real positive I have to say about this costume. It looks like Jinzo from Yu-Gi-Oh! fell into a vat of Pepto-Bismol. The color palette is horribly garish, the spikes on his head seem out of place given how unintimidating the rest of the design is, and unlike most 3Ps, it isn't a major departure from his usual appearance. 2 out of 10. His Soul Calibur 1 1P is less chaotic, with most of the asymmetry now coming from his armor rather than the suit itself. The biggest addition is his chest piece, which looks like a parasitic creature that's latched onto him, upping the creepiness factor. There's also a large gemstone in the middle, which is a reminder that he lives in a treasure trove. His main color is now red instead of purple, but unlike his Soul Edge ult, it's a dark red that pairs nicely with gold. I don't like the colander cod piece he has going on, but other than that, I think this is an improvement. 6 out of 10. His 2P is pretty plain, but it still manages to be bizarre even by Valdo standards. He has tattoos or body paint like in his old 3P, and once again, that's the only part I like. 
I think there is meant to be a bovine theme with the bull's head on his crotch and the horns on his mask, but it doesn't really commit to that. And also, the horns on his mask are going the wrong way to be bull's horns. Fun fact, this costume was censored in some regions by removing the bull's head, which is hilarious to me. Out of everything going on with Valdo, that's what they had an issue with? As for the rest of his outfit, there just isn't much going on. Even the color palette is uninteresting, mostly brown with tiny splashes of desaturated blue. 1 out of 10. His 3P feels like a callback to his Soul Edge 1P, as it's very revealing and asymmetrical. This costume's main distinguishing feature is the long plume of white hair sticking out the top of his head, which just looks goofy. Astroth has a similar thing going on in his 2P, so I guess one of the designers was under the false impression that this is cool. The color palette is more eye-catching than that of his 2P, although the white of his suit gets lost against his pale skin. 2 out of 10. His Soul Calibur 2 1P is more covered up than his previous 1Ps, although it maintains a similar aesthetic. There are elaborate patterns on his armor that match those on his weapons, and a subtle texture on the purple part of his suit. The predominantly white palette makes him look a bit mummy-ish, which doesn't make any sense for Voldo, but it's cool. 7 out of 10. His 2P, believe it or not, is fully clothed. The poofy pants and sleeves, as well as the white collar and gloves, give it an air of sophistication, which is a far cry from his usual looks. It seems to take inspiration from France more so than Italy, as it makes use of a fleur de lis motif. While it would have been neat to see a costume more directly tied to Voldo's heritage, it makes sense that Verci would have French items in his collection. There are cutouts on the sides of his torso that make him look slimmer than he actually is, which is a trick also employed by most versions of Spider-Man's suit. This is very unlike Valdo's previous designs, but it's fitting. My main criticism is that the mask feels totally disconnected from everything else. Some small pieces of armor here and there would help alleviate that problem. 6 out of 10. His 3P is possibly his strangest costume yet, which is really saying something. It's sinister and alien. In fact, the helmet bears a resemblance to a xenomorph. The bodysuit is more typical for Valdo, even featuring a purple pattern much like his 1P, but the spikes give it a unique twist. Looks a bit too modern for my liking, but that sort of works in its favor, because it makes it seem even more unusual and out of place. 8 out of 10. His Soul Calibur 3 1P is an iteration of his Soul Calibur 1 1P. The most major additions are some white paint on his chest, back, and shoulder, which are reminiscent of his tattoos from earlier games, and the locked belt around his midsection, which symbolizes repression. I don't dislike either of these, but they feel tacked on. 5 out of 10. His 2P is a Jester's Ensemble. His masks are reminiscent of those worn during Carnivale di Venezia, making this one of the few costumes that actually pulls from his Italian culture. And that's right, I said masks, plural, because the entire outfit is split in two. The front half is based on the sun and is more masculine in appearance, while the back half is based on the moon and is more feminine in appearance. This design choice is genius, because Valdo excels at fighting while his back is turned, so as well as being visually intriguing, it informs us of his playstyle. Another neat detail is that one mask is blindfolded and the other is gagged, which keeps this recognizable as Valdo. The color palette looks good, but I'm not sure why they went with green as opposed to a color more associated with the moon or the night sky. White, gray, black, blue, or even purple like in the concept art would all be more logical choices. 9 out of 10. His Soul Calibur 4 1P goes for an edgier look, and I don't just mean how skimpy it is. The colors have been toned way down, and he's covered in evil imagery like spikes and eyeballs. There are some interesting ideas here, but the costume is all over the place, and it doesn't seem intentional like in his Soul Edge 1P. There's chainmail on his shoulder but nowhere else, there's a scale pattern on his chest plate but nowhere else, there's strings on his thighs but nowhere else, even the aforementioned eyeball motif is limited to his bottom half. It also steals some elements of his older designs, like the binoculars from his Soul Edge 2P and the pointed toes from his Soul Calibur 3 2P, but neither of them really fit this costume's aesthetic. Lastly, despite how little he's wearing, the armor is unusually bulky. It seems like he would have difficulty moving the way he does. This is far from his worst design, but I think it's his weakest 1P. 4 out of 10. His 2P brings back the mask from his Soul Calibur 2 2P, but the rest is a brand new design that matches it quite a bit better. He looks more threatening than ever thanks to his blood red palette and the abundance of spikes and blades that adorn his armor. The ribbed section in the center of his mask has always looked vaguely insectoid, and this design rolls with that idea. His chestplate and tacit in particular almost form the shape of a scorpion, which is perfect for a character who skitters across the ground. 8 out of 10. Speaking of arachnids, his Soul Calibur 5 1P goes all in on a spider theme. There's a spider on the back of his head, there's a spider on his chest, there's a spider on his crotch, and even his limbs are fuzzy and striped like those of a tarantula. Interestingly, all of the spiders are upside down, which I think was done so that they're facing the opponent when he enters his mantis crawl stance. This is his only 1P that's entirely symmetrical, and as such, it loses some of that chaotic energy he's known for, but this actually reflects his story progression. Between Soul Caliburs 4 and 5, the apparition of Verci was dispelled, and what's more, he finally succeeded in recovering the items that had been stolen from the money pit. So this is the most content and mentally stable, relatively speaking of course, that Valdo has been in a long time. 
7 out of 10. His 2P takes the concept of his Soul Calibur 3 2P and cranks it up a notch. Rather than being split in half with a day and night theme, it's split into quarters with a Four Seasons theme. Each section has not only its own color, but its own pattern, giving them totally unique aesthetics. It's missing the blindfold and gag, which makes it a little less Valdo-y, but that's not enough to hold it back from a 10 out of 10. Good times didn't last long for Valdo, because Soul Calibur 6 is a reboot of the series. This costume combines his classic look with the half-and-half -half design of his Soul Calibur 3 and 5 2Ps. The dichotomy this time is between his usual freaky self in the front and a formal, dignified persona in the back, although he still has his butt hanging out for some reason. It also slightly incorporates the spider theme, as there are webs around the mask on the back of his head. His palette has a lot more gold this time around, which emphasizes his wealth, or more accurately, his master's wealth. Unfortunately, all of these positives are far outweighed by the giant spikes on his nipples and crotch. These are disturbing for all the wrong reasons, and they make it impossible to take him seriously. There's always been a perverse element to Voldo, but I think this is a step too far. Also, the whole thing is a tad busy. 5 out of 10. Soul Calibur 6 doesn't have any alternate costumes, but it does have alternate colors. His color 2 is silver, purple, and teal. Silver is a natural alternative to gold, and the cool hues go well together. 5 out of 10. His color 3 is brown, yellow, and green. It looks alright, but the earthy colors are a little low-key for Voldo. They aren't as eye-catching as his other palettes. 4 out of 10. Lastly, his color 4 is red and white, and it moves the mask to the front of his face. This is a great option to have, and it doesn't hurt that it's my favorite color. 6 out of 10. And with that, we have ranked every single Voldo costume. They're certainly unique, and sometimes they're really cool and creative, but often they're just unpleasant. But that's just my opinion, so what do you think? Let me know in the comment section down below if you agree or disagree with any of my rankings. Also, let me know which character you'd like to see next. For episode 21, we'll be discussing Tira, as requested by Scott Adams. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and until next time, I bid thee farewell.